is no place on Earth quite like it. Here, the astonishing is commonplace. Turtles strike like snakes. And tarantulas share their homes with tiny frogs. This is a realm both beautiful and brutal, where adaptation is the key to survival. This is the wild Amazon. Amazon River Basin. By any measure, it's one of the greatest natural habitats on Earth. The world's largest rainforest is watered by the world's mightiest river. It's home to the greatest diversity of living things anywhere. And dozens are still discovered every year. The Amazon is changing fast, threatening the animals and plants that have thrived here for millions of years. Their future hangs in the balance. Black Cayman are among the Amazon's most ancient inhabitants. These living fossils have remained almost unchanged since the time of dinosaurs. But recently, a strange behavior has been observed among Cayman. happens during the dry season. Between June and October, when rain falls only a few days a month, giving the Amazon a chance to dry out. River levels drop, leaving shallow pools along the edges of waterways. The black caiman are quick to seize the opportunity. Birds take notice too. Black skimmers move inland from the coast. And egrets gather by the hundreds. They are all here for one thing. The fishing is excellent. The pools have stranded huge shoals of fish. And the Amazon's largest predator closes in. During the dry season, the caiman gather in large numbers. But what they do next is even more extraordinary. This strange behavior is still not fully understood. Caimans are known to jump and slap the water as part of a mating display. But here, it's transformed into a synchronized and deadly ballet. The caiman appear to be working in a pack to round up their prey. Panicked fish are caught by the hungry jaws. Those that escape are picked off by the egrets probing the shallows and skimmers targeting the surface. The fish don't stand a chance. The Amazon basin dominates the northern half of South America, stretching over 400 million hectares. 
Weaving through this hothouse of weird and wonderful life is the Amazon River itself, flowing for more than 6,000 kilometers. The creatures of this realm are part of a complex web of mutual dependence. Their interlocking relationships have evolved over millennia. One of the strangest and most mysterious involves a very small frog and a very large spider. It is behavior rarely seen before. This dotted humming frog lives on the forest floor, a dangerous place. Full of potential predators, including this burrowing tarantula spider. This nocturnal hunter with a leg span of up to 16 centimeters can easily catch mice and even small birds. It kills by injecting its prey with venom. The poison first stuns and then, while the victim is still alive, dissolves it from the inside. So the spider can suck out the remains. Any creature would be keen to avoid such a fate. It seems the little dotted humming frog has made a fatal error in its choice of refuge. A tarantula's lair is a potential death trap especially one filled with hungry babies. For the frog, the outcome cannot be good. Once it's within range, the spider will pounce and inject its deadly dose of venom. But not this time. Hairs on the spider's legs allow her to detect chemicals on the frog's skin. Perhaps she senses that the frog would make a dangerous meal. So, why welcome it into her burrow? It seems this is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Frogs eat ants, which in turn prey on spider eggs and spiderlings. And for the frog, there's total protection. No other predator would dare take on this mother. Or her babies. Nearby, another remarkable story of cooperation and adaptation is unfolding. It involves a tree, a bee, and a razor-toothed rodent. A forest plant and two animals earn South American economies millions of dollars a year by doing what comes naturally. Brazil nuts really do come from Brazil. And most grow wild in the Amazon. But they depend on pollinators that have evolved with the necessary skills. The Brazil nut tree's pale, fleshy flowers have tightly wrapped petals. Prying them apart to reach the nectar inside takes a lot of muscle. Only the biggest and strongest bees can do it. For its efforts, the bee is rewarded with a sip of nectar. But as it struggles with the flower, it's also dusted with pollen. When the bee visits other Brazil nut flowers, the pollen shakes loose, the bee gets a meal, and the flowers are fertilized. The third party in this tale 
is a little mammal whose efforts ensure the Brazil nut tree lives on. Anaguti is one of the few creatures in the rainforest with strong enough teeth to break the outer shell of the seed pod. Its reward is a hearty meal, packed with essential fat and calories. A single pod can contain up to 25 nuts. Way too many for the agouti to eat in one meal. So he hides the leftovers. The agouti buries his treasure all over the forest. Some nuts will remain in the ground to germinate and grow into the next generation of Brazil nut trees. Ancient relationships like these are essential to the life of the Amazon. They have made the forest what it is today. But can they endure as the forest changes around them? Much of the Amazon basin lies in Brazil, where deforestation is a major problem. Trees are being burned to clear land for farming and cut down to meet the demand for lumber. Up to 80% of the logging is illegal. Now the forest may have a fighting chance with the help of an armed task force. The government has declared war on the illegal loggers. But protecting an area larger than India is almost impossible. Every day, the Amazon still loses 19 square kilometers of forest. And besides the trees, much more is lost. A complex living community filled with undiscovered secrets that could benefit all mankind. Among its other wonders, the Amazon is the world's medicine chest. Scientists already know that over a quarter of the active ingredients in cancer-fighting drugs come from the rainforests, even though they have only tested 1% of the plants. Some plants are packed with deadly compounds. They're the source for poisons like cyanide and addictive drugs like nicotine and cocaine. Countless other plants use poisons as chemical defenses. Unripe forest fruits are bitter, toxic, and normally indigestible. But macaws have little to eat during the dry season. They use their strong beaks and agile claws to extract whatever nourishment they can. and then have to deal with a belly full of toxic plant matter. Like other parrots, they have found a solution. At this time of year, parrots will travel more than 15 kilometers every two or three days to a particular bend in the river. They're heading for clay banks, exposed by the river as it dries and recedes. Somehow, the birds have learned over time that clay neutralizes the toxins in their diet, which makes it an essential ingredient for surviving the dry season.
The cliffs also provide the perfect place to meet and greet others of their kind. Macaws are the largest and one of the most beautiful parrots in the world. In South America, there are 17 different species, all with stunning and brilliant plumage. Highly intelligent and extremely sociable, they travel together in large flocks as they search for food. They carry on a seemingly endless conversation of loud squawks. Socializing is more than a way to pass the time. It's a chance to find a mate. For macaws, this is an important choice. They mate for life. A faithful partnership that can last for 50 years. Macaws aren't the only creatures that must deal with plants that are poisonous, tasteless, or just difficult to eat. It's a common problem here. The plant's defense against voracious vegetarians. But few creatures are as ingenious as the Amazon's most numerous inhabitants, ants. The leaf-cutter ants have been hard at work here for over 50 million years. An ant carefully measures out a portion of leaf using her leg span as a guide. Then she removes the piece using jaws that vibrate a thousand times a second. Leaf cutter ants have an elaborate cast system defined by the size of the ant. The largest are the soldiers, who stand ready to defend the long lines of medium-sized foragers as they carry the leaf sections back to the nest. The foragers lift loads up to 20 times their own weight, the equivalent of a human carrying a small car. Smaller ants act as additional guardians for the workers, ever vigilant, even when they're hitching a ride. The leaf cutter's underground nest can measure over 15 meters in diameter and be up to five meters deep. It's home to up to eight million individuals. What happens inside is extraordinary. Within the nest, leaf portions are handed over to the smallest cast, the gardeners. They chew the leaves into a sticky mass and store it in special chambers. Another chamber houses the colony's most precious possession, an edible fungus. A gardener cuts off a piece of the fungus and carries it to the new stash. In no time, it will begin to grow on the leaves. It's this fungus, not the leaves, that feeds the ants. And they cultivate it as carefully as any human gardeners. It's an amazing adaptation, one that has taken millions of years to perfect. Unlike the leaf-cutter ants beneath their feet, the Matias people have never relied on gardening. Instead, they gather plants and hunt. One of nearly 200 native tribes still living in the Amazon, their first contact with the outside world was as recent as the 1970s.
Since then, an estimated third of their population have been wiped out by Western diseases. And the survivors now live in the protection of a national park. Through countless generations, the Matis people have gained a deep knowledge of their jungle home. They understand how to make use of the poisonous plants around them. The bark of a liana is essential to their survival. <laughs> Boiled down to a paste, it becomes a powerful nerve toxin known as curare. Curare can act in seconds, paralyzing chest muscles and suffocating victims to death. For the martis, it makes a perfect weapon for catching the fast and nimble monkeys whose meat they prize. All of South America's primates dwell in the forest canopy, rarely venturing down to the ground. Most eat whatever they come across, from fruit and flowers to insects and sap. In Brazil alone, there are over 100 different kinds of monkey, more than any other region in the world. And nine new species have been discovered in the last decade. Common squirrel monkeys are one of the most successful. They're found throughout the Amazon. Squirrel monkeys grow up fast, and by 10 months, they've left their mothers. But for a young, inexperienced monkey, life is precarious. There is danger lurking in the forest. The Martis tribesmen are on a monkey hunt. They've already prepared the tips of their arrows with curare. But catching a fast-moving target takes more than a lethal weapon. So they turn once more to the forest plants to gain an advantage. <laughs> They concoct a solution, mixing ebony plant in a little water. They drip it into their eyes. The procedure is excruciatingly painful. But they believe it will sharpen their eyesight and heighten their senses, endowing them with the stealth of the forest creatures and enabling them to move silently as shadows across the jungle floor. <laughs> Armed and ready, they head into the forest. Deep in the forest, the young squirrel monkey has been distracted by an insect snack. He's fallen behind the rest of the troop. Below him, a predator stalks. The Martis hunters are on his tail. His speed and agility make him a difficult target. But the hunters are armed with powerful weapons, poison-tipped arrows, plus their deep understanding of the forest. The animal calls, perfected by the Martis, 
confuse the young monkey. He's naturally inquisitive and moves closer to the calls. A fatal mistake. The poison brings paralysis within seconds. Life in the Amazon is tough, but the forest provides for all its inhabitants once they master its secrets. But most of the creatures they share the forest with have been here much longer. One of the weirdest has lived here for three million years. It lumbers through the undergrowth, a one meter high plant eater, a close relative of the rhino and the horse, with a snout like an elephant's trunk. This is the tapir. It's well equipped for a life of browsing. At over 200 kilos, he's the Amazon's largest herbivore. With a nose finely tuned for sniffing out edible plants. Essential when many of the forest plants tend to be tough, toxic or low in calories. Spending hours wandering through this hostile environment in search of food is hard work for a heavy tapir. But it has to eat huge quantities to produce enough energy to survive. Some animals find a meal by hardly moving at all. A nearby stream looks peaceful, but appearances are deceiving. Camouflaged body armor is a useful asset for an ambush predator. Hidden in the leaf-littered shallows, it waits patiently for an opportunity. The matter matter turtle. This bizarre creature has been polishing its deadly tactics for millennia. Its name, Mata Mata, simply means kill. It remains motionless. But as a reptile, it must breathe air. The Mata Mata does that by extending its specially adapted neck, moving slowly to avoid detection. And using its snout as a snorkel. When a fish gets close enough, the matter matter opens its huge mouth, creating a vacuum. And sucks in its victim, faster than the blink of a human eye. Farther down the river, an unlikely resident of the Amazon waterways abandons the shrinking lagoons of the dry season and heads into open, deeper waters. This is a male Amazon river dolphin. Most dolphins live in salt water, but this species adapted to the rivers long ago. Now the entire basin is his playground. 
Like other dolphins, he uses sonar to hunt. That comes in handy in these murky waters. But unlike his marine cousins, unfused bones in his neck make it much more flexible. A crucial adaptation when he hunts in smaller rivers often choked with tangled vegetation and tree roots. Males and females stay apart for most of the year. But now, at the height of the dry season, this dolphin has come to a wide stretch of water, looking for a mate. When he finds a promising female, he begins a strange courtship dance. The male tosses a piece of driftwood around, perhaps to attract the female's attention. If she accepts him, the pair will mate. The female will move into small lakes and lagoons nearby. Quieter backwaters that will provide food and shelter as she awaits the arrival of her single calf. Towards the end of the dry season, the river levels are at their lowest, exposing broad sandbanks. For one huge and ancient creature, this new and temporary landscape offers a brief opportunity essential to their future survival. Female giant Amazon river turtles are on the move. They're powerful swimmers and may travel great distances. The females come to the same stretches of the river year after year. They search for the highest spots on the beaches to lay their eggs. Finely grained sand makes these banks perfect for laying eggs. More than a meter long and weighing up to 90 kilos, the giant females drag themselves out of the water to bask in the sun. The temperature of the sand rises during the heat of the day. The hot sand will act like an incubator, speeding up the growth of the eggs. But it's dangerous. Amazon's top predator is on the prowl. With one of the strongest bites of all big cats, a jaguar can easily puncture a turtle's shell. The females retreat to the safety of the water. The jaguar can wait. But the turtle's clock is ticking. Under cover of darkness, one turtle seizes her moment. Once the hole is dug, she lays her eggs and covers them gently with sand. If all goes well, they will hatch in six weeks. Her timing is crucial, and there is little margin for error. In a few weeks, the rains will return, and the beaches will be washed away. Precious eggs must hatch before then. It's a precise timetable, and the turtles have followed it for countless generations.
But the climate is changing here, as it is elsewhere around the globe. If weather patterns shift before the turtles have a chance to adapt, they could be doomed to extinction. Another river dweller faces a similar climate crisis, the giant river otter. Giant river otters are rare and endangered, with fewer than 5,000 remaining in the wild. They're the largest of their kind, measuring up to two meters long. This family group has 10 members, headed up by mom and dad. They're highly social and constantly check in with each other using a variety of vocalizations. Their communication involves a complex system of sounds, scents, and postures. Locals call them the wolves of the river, and they are proficient predators. With their wing-like tails, webbed feet, and sleek fur, they're built for the water and have no problem catching enough to eat. Each otter feeds on up to four kilos of fish a day. Every year at the start of the dry season, the mother otter relies on river levels falling to expose patches of dry land where she can make her den. These quiet backwaters provide a perfect place for young otters to learn and play. 14 weeks old, and the pups are still mastering the skills they'll need to survive. But it's a race against time. The rains are about to return, and the den will flood. If weather patterns change, it will challenge this finely tuned parenting plan. One creature may be better equipped to deal with climate change. It's the world's largest freshwater fish. The piruruku can grow to three meters in length and weigh more than two baby elephants. It lives in slow-moving waterways that are murky from decaying vegetation. Tannin in the leaves turns the water acidic. Not ideal for most fish. And as climate change causes temperatures to rise, oxygen levels are likely to fall even farther. But the piruruku has an amazing secret weapon. Along with its reduced gills, it has evolved with an air bladder that acts like a lung. The piruruku rises to the surface for a gulp of air, taking in oxygen through its mouth. It is uniquely adapted to exploit areas avoided by other large fish. And the low oxygen levels render its smaller neighbors sluggish, making them easy targets. Its adaptation may give the piruruku the winning advantage in a changing world. Logging in the Amazon is turning stretches of forest into islands of isolated vegetation. Every species will have to be able to move or adapt in order to survive. And not all creatures are mobile. This pale-throated sloth prefers the security of the canopy and only comes to the ground once a week to defecate. When he does, 
he's limited to a crawl. The sloth lives solely on leaves, a low-calorie diet that provides little energy and is difficult to process. So he spends up to 18 hours a day resting and digesting. This sedentary lifestyle explains how the sloth got his name and his reputation for being lazy. Only the calls of a nearby female get him moving. With poor eyesight, he's reliant on his other senses to find her. Her lichen-covered fur makes her even harder to spot among the branches. It's also a cosy bed for her three-month-old baby boy. He still relies on his mother for food and protection. It will be another five months before he's on his own. But she's ready to mate again. Sloth courtship is slow and graceful. But she may reject him with her baby still around. If these sloths mate successfully, the female will give birth in about six months, by which time her son will be independent. But what kind of future does he face? The sloth's home in the forest canopy is an uncertain refuge. Their lack of mobility makes it difficult to adapt to changing conditions. They're too awkward and too slow to move safely across open ground. As the forest becomes more fragmented, they could be doomed to extinction. The creatures of the Amazon have developed their incredible survival strategies over millions of years. If conditions here change too rapidly because of a warming climate or a disappearing forest, many will be unable to adapt. This time, they're fortunate, and the rains are arriving on time. As a new season begins, the waters rise again. Plants and animals will adjust to the change, just as they always have. Here, resilience has always been rewarded with survival. Today, as this region faces an uncertain future, only time will tell if its vast scale and dazzling bounty can ensure that the Amazon itself will survive.